Well, hey guys, welcome to Hope Rescue Podcast. I'm Kimberly Scott, and this is my handsome husband, yeah. Timothy Scott. I haven't done that to you in a while. Yeah, my and let me smoking you, hot this, husband, behind Tim the Scott. Scenes, you know, for those that listen to the podcast, this means <laughs> nothing. But for those that watch the podcast, and we have a pretty good following on uh, YouTube. Yeah. But, uh, I came downstairs with a certain hat on <laughs> and, and a shirt, and, and both my daughter... And my wife said, oh, 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 no. You're going to need oh, to no. take that back no. upstairs. Hey, you're going and- to you're gonna have to try again, <laughs> bucko. So I went and changed. This is all I could come up Babe, with. Babe, the thing is, is you really do have pretty good instincts, but every once in a, a while. Everyone, but don't we It was we a all? cool shirt. It was you a know? cool shirt. It was a really nice blue plaid uh, shirt. Yeah. With a really... But it was just, wanted, yeah. It, was, it didn't work. We were trying to go more spring Easter, which, by the way, welcome to our second show about Easter and the evidence of Easter, but we're celebrating evidence that this week. Yeah. And th- speaking of bad outfits, think about the ones you've worn on the pulpit in the years past on Easter Sunday. Oh, okay. Let me tell you. Give me, give me your best. Okay. One Easter... I saw somebody do this, and it looked so cool. And it was a long time ago. You remember when Pat Boone was young? Yeah. No, you don't, because you. I mean, I know he, who he is. Yeah, Pat Boone's like eighty-nine or ninety, yeah. something like that, and he's still still doing great. Yeah. But anyway, so when he was in, it was the white shoes and the white belt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I saw some celebrity wear an all white suit. Yes. With white shoes, yeah. white belt, white shirt, and a white is monochrome. So did you is that do what you that? Call I did that. What year was that? Uh, it's probably it was in the eighties. You were like Jesus coming out of the tomb. I was. With, I was looking like a super fly. I was like a fly. I was like a fly <laughs> pastor. And uh, the I, only thing that would have made it better was a white turtleneck. With I that, could, I could tell you. <laughs> I could tell you uh, nobody said anything the day of because it was too late to change. But afterwards, my uh, staff gave me a hard time yeah. and never let it go. Yeah. But well, I thought it was cool. That th- th- that's when you, you allow those who love you most into your world to yeah. help you maybe yeah. like edit that a little bit on yeah. your way out. <laughs> you know, we're, you know, the last uh, 20 years or so, we've been pretty casual. Oh, yeah. And so uh, on Easter... I would almost always wear a suit, even mm-hmm. in the casual that we had yeah. all the time. It's not just a, yeah. a Christian tradition. It's across the board, people who celebrate a version of you know, Easter, whether it's at church or with family just having a meal, tend to dress up. Yeah, but what, what's with the hats? I don't know, but you that's, ladies wore oh my hats gosh. on Easter. My Our, mom wore yes. a hat on Easter. I always. remember in the eighties, we everything was so big. We had the shoulder pads, the hair, and the big hats on Easter. There was a lot going on. <laughs> and another time was <laughs> opening day at uh, the races. Yes. Uh, she <laughs> wore that same, same hat. No, she never very, went. Very um, similar. <laughs> <laughs> and the women would style it up. Mm-hmm. Man, they look so yeah. fancy and everything. Yeah, well, that's. Those, when you're doing horse racing and the resurrection still of Jesus. happens on Easter, are, yeah. uh, the, the stylish hats, depending on what church culture you come from, which I think they're lovely. But I do think across the board, for the most yeah. part, people have become more casual. And I'm not sure what it has to do with the actual Sunday, other than people want to um, celebrate with their best on a day that they, if it's they're from looking, the Christian looking good. tradition, you know, Jesus yeah. is risen. He is risen yeah, my indeed. Dad, my dad used to say to me, are you going to go to church dressed? like that and I said well God looks at the inward not the outward good one too and and he would come back I'm looking at the outward go change do you like hitch up the back side of the head Jesus well (laughs) I don't want want to talk about the abuse I suffered (laughs) as a child so let's jump into the two evidences that we have the two kinds of evidence so we talked about last time um, and, and just to kind of unpack this if you didn't hear last week's uh, episode on Hope Rescue podcast at hoperescuepodcast.org. I'm plugging our show while we're on the show. Anyway, so uh, last week we talked about how so many people demand scientific evidence or they won't believe. Mm -hmm. Well, scientific evidence is great. Now, the problem is scientific evidence does have a tendency to change as as new science Mm -hmm. develops 
and so forth. Uh, many things are affirmed. There are still people that believe in the flat earth. Yes. I've seen some great videos oh gosh, on how crazy. dumb that is. But anyway, if you believe in the flat earth, I don't know mm, what I want to tell you. Yeah. I don't want to, but anyway, uh, science has debunked that and so forth. But anyway, science is kind of As, the yes. everything for kind of a secular world right. because they don't believe in the supernatural. They don't believe in God. So that leaves you with science. But it doesn't just leave you with science. And we talked about this last week, and we called it legal historic evidence, mm -hmm. which includes documentary evidence. It includes eyewitnesses it in, it includes um collected accounts it, in, it includes oral tradition yeah. all of those things are in legal historical evidence so we believe in a lot of things we talked last time about napoleon but you take anybody from history um and why do we believe it you right. know mm -hmm. if we didn't live at that time and we mm -hmm. didn't see it or if it uh, was written down in books that's right right so the, the thing about it is that is legal evidence just like science. Right. So, I mean, it's a if, you can, if in a crime, if you can get DNA, that seems to convince the jury. Mm -hmm. But a legal historical evidence is just as mm -hmm. profound. Yeah. Um, and necessary. Yeah. So what we wanted to do last time we talked about uh, Jesus' prophecy of his death, burial, and resurrection, how he would die by whom he would die, under what authority he would die, which was Roman, not Jewish, uh, w when and where. And then he also talked about the fact that he would be raised from the dead in three days. And yeah. we really, really want to talk about some evidence today mm -hmm. about um, uh, eyewitnesses to the resurrection of Jesus. So, yes, which we just touched on that right before we finished our last episode. Right. So I'm going to read a passage regarding the case of the 500 witnesses, and that comes out of 1 Corinthians 15, 3. And it says this, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. In so, other words, passed away. Right. Um, let's, let's talk about that. Let's kind of break that down. First of all, he says, I present you the gospel. He calls it the gospel in verses one and two, which you didn't read um, because we didn't have it here. But, um, you know, he says, this is the gospel. And it, it, it's according to scripture. And it is that not just the death of Christ. So there are some people that believe that the gospel is that Jesus died for your sins. Mm -hmm. And that's not the gospel. The gospel is what, what Kimberly read in verses three and four is the gospel is that Jesus died according to the scripture for our sins, according mm -hmm. to the scripture, that he was buried. Mm -hmm. And on the third day, he was raised from the dead. According to the scriptures, the gospel is those three things. It's that, uh, experience of De Jesus death, burial and resurrection that saves us. We have the forgiveness of our sins through his shed blood, the expending of his life, but we have eternal life through him, through resurrection. Mm -hmm. And his resurrection then later on, he talks about that it was passed to all of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it were not true, we would be of most people miserable because yeah. we're believing a lie. But he gives the evidence for it. And who were the first people that he saw? Uh, that saw him. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you remember the ladies show up at the tomb right. and uh, they were going to go check things out. And they're the first ones to realize yeah. that the guards were gone. Yep. The seal was broken. The seal was broken. Mm -hmm. The tomb was empty and the, the garments that he had been laid in the tomb were lying there yes. on, on that bed in mm -hmm. there. So the, the reality was there was evidence of an empty tomb Think about, and we talked a little bit about this last week, is that if you have a seal, a Roman seal, mm -hmm. and that seal is broken, the person that breaks that seal is under the punishment of death mm -hmm. uh, by the Roman Empire. The soldiers were to guard that tomb by their own life, and they fled. 
some of them just completely passed out mm-hmm. when it was uh, when the resurrection took place yeah. when the uh, the stone was rolled away and they passed out but they fled they were afraid right. because they were going to be killed they uh it wasn't just uh um uh, something that was made up by christians the roman empire yeah. knew that he had been raised from the dead. And they didn't want people to potentially steal his body uh, because, and to then again, like back up the story that he was risen from the dead. They, they were trying to avoid um, some of his followers from breaking that seal, which is why right. they put it on there exactly. and put the guard there. They didn't want anybody to stir up trouble. Yeah. And uh, he broke his own seal. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of the miracle yeah. of it. You know, it was not just the resurrection that he came to life again, but that miraculously angelic powers mm-hmm. uh, rolled that stone away yep. and released him from that tomb. So it's it's very involved, and it was a supernatural yeah. event. For those that don't believe in the supernatural, it's really hard to explain the reaction of the Romans. It's and the guards and the disciples did not steal his body. That was in, they were incapable of penetrating the, uh, the protection of that tomb by the Roman soldiers. Mm -hmm. But then he was seen by all of the 12, the, all the 12, uh, disciples saw Jesus. Now, uh, at this time, uh, it's just an incredible time where these people are just, um, um, overwhelmed Mm -hmm. with the fulfillment of this. But here's an interesting thing that they were in the upper room waiting on that first day after his death. They should have been ready for his resurrection, but they, you know, they believed Jesus, but then you got to wonder because nobody was doing a countdown and going, you know, okay, the resurrection's coming, Uh, you know, but there was no, and to, they were all shocked at his resurrection, even though he, in, and we read this last time, even though clearly he had prophesied everything he had done in those prophecies that had came been true. done to him. But how many people saw him at one time? Yeah, it 500, says, 500. And it's, uh, let's see. Yeah. 500 people mm-hmm. at one time. And I, you read this, but it says most of whom are alive today. Mm-hmm. So why is that important? Some have died, he said, but most of whom are alive today. So when you have uh, empirical evidence, eyewitnesses, you want to cross-examine them. Uh, In a court of law, you want to cross-examine them. In fact, in many cases, um, uh, witnesses are not admissible unless it's firsthand, so you can't Mm -hmm. do hearsay. But uh, these people could be questioned Yes. About whether because they, they were still alive, right. mm-hmm. and these people at the writing of First Corinthians fifteen, yeah. which was in I think in uh, the mid sixties A.D., so these people were still alive. You could question them. They saw Jesus all together. Five hundred people at one time mm-hmm. saw Jesus. I mean, this is incredible yeah. eyewitness yeah. and proof of this. Um, let me let me give the case of the disciples though, because I think this is important. Apostles. Uh, yeah, the apostles yeah. that that became the apostles. These apostles were were prophesied that they would scatter. They they were they were told they would scatter. I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. But um, they also abandoned Jesus. You know, they abandoned Jesus when he was arrested. Let me show you this. Matthew twenty six thirty one. Jesus said to them, "You will all fall away from me this night." And they did. They all abandoned Jesus when he was arrested. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. They scattered. When he was arrested, they didn't go with him. In fact, Peter followed afar off. You remember? He's watching, but he's standing back. Mm -hmm. And that whole night, all this stuff is going on and so forth. And he's sitting, Peter's sitting at a fire. And Jesus is there. And one person says, wait a minute, don't you know Jesus? And he said, no, I I don't know who he is. A while longer, another one questioned him. And then one questioned him, I I think it was a young woman, Mm -hmm. said, you knew Jesus. I can tell you are one of his followers. You could tell by his accent, his appearance, and so forth. And uh, he started, and he was swearing. Uh He started to swear 
and said, I do not know him. And just when he had said that after the third time that he denied Christ, the cock crowed. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus had prophesied. But here's what you got to understand. Jesus is right across the fire from Peter when he denied him. Yeah. Can you imagine? Oh my goodness. You are so afraid. Your savior is right across the fire from you, the person you had followed for three years mm -hmm. and you've dedicated your life to Witnessed him. Witnessed over now, and over again. Right, miracles. all the miracles, mm -hmm. exactly. And he looks across and he looks at the eyes of Jesus and he denied him. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely incredible. But that was the prophecy Jesus gave. And, uh, you know, there was something that happened after that mm -hmm. that is so important. Yeah, so then there was a transformation of the disciples in that they wouldn't even stand with Jesus during his crucifixion. Yeah, who was there? Yeah. John was there. His mama. And, and John, well, <laughs> the, the women were there. Yeah. Which, by the way, was very common at a crucifixion. Yeah. Women would go and they would see sure. to mm -hmm. uh, their family member that was being crucified. Mm -hmm. But Jesus' mother was there and John was there. That was part of the interaction yeah. that Jesus had on but the But for cross. the most part, they scattered. They scattered. They scattered. Well, John just came as back. That was predicted as well. Yeah, John scattered too mm -hmm. until uh, uh, somewhere during the crucifixion, he shows up. Yeah. So... But, uh, that scattering was really important, but something happened after yeah, the resurrection. Yeah, so after the resurrection, of course, and them witnessing that, that's when they were all willing to basically lay their life down for him. Yeah. And that that was the massive transformation for them was um, not just, you know, it's so interesting because he clearly had told them everything that was going to happen up until the resurrection, and they... They ran. They wouldn't yeah. stand by him. But as soon as he resurrected, that was the one miracle that yeah. they were able to say, I will actually lay my life on the line and become an apostle and, and yeah. give up my life for this message, what, which is so weird to me because like they'd seen people completely transformed, healed, and, and yet it took the res actual resurrection. They saw all of these prophecies come true, and yet it was the resurrection. They even the saw point. the resurrection of Lazarus, yeah, his f Jesus' close friend, but that didn't move them. What moved them was that their Messiah had been raised at the very time he said he would be. Right. He died the way all of the prophecies came true. This emboldened them. And let me, I just wrote down several of the martyrdoms of these disciples, these apostles. Um, only one, for sure, John, the apostle, lived in into 90-some A.D. when he wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John in Revelation. I, I think he wrote uh, the Gospel of John in the, in the 80s of the first century, but these guys were crucified. Do you remember Jesus said, take up my cross, and follow me. Uh, take up your cross means to die. Mm -hmm. That's what the cross is about. It's mm -hmm. crucifixion. But they would all be crucified. James killed by the sword, 40 AD. Mm -hmm. Peter killed, 64 AD. Crucified upside down, uh, tradition says. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrew, 70 AD. He was hanged. Thomas was burned alive in 70 AD. Uh, Philip was crucified in 54 AD. Matthew was beheaded between 60 and 70 AD. Doesn't make you want to be a disciple, does Yikes. it? Uh, Bartholomew uh, was uh, crucified 70 AD. James the Lesser was thrown from the temple and beaten to death in 63 AD. Simon the Zealot was killed in 74 AD. Judas Thaddeus was beaten to death in 70 AD. Matthias, who was the 12th after Judas died, Matthias was the one that became the 12th uh, apostle while he was hanging on the cross uh, in 70 AD. He was stoned while he was being killed. Mm. And John lived as a martyr in Patmos died of natural causes in 95 AD or thereabouts. All of these people suffered for following Jesus. Yeah. They wouldn't even, when he was arrested, they wouldn't stand up for him, mm -hmm. but their transformation yes. is one of the strongest mm -hmm. evidences of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. These weak followers of Jesus became powerful yeah. Followers of Jesus after his resurrection. And it was their unwillingness to give up that truth that brought them to yeah. their death. Yeah. So 
One other situation happens that's really um, interesting, and we'll probably close with this, but it's the case of mm-hmm. Thomas, if you'll read that. Yeah. So in John 20, 24, it says, Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands, the marks of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he, Jesus, said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. So an interesting thing is how did he get in the room? Yeah. So that tells you something about right. the Ooh, body of Jesus. <laughs> and uh, that's we're not going to deal with that. But I just, you know, Thomas has got a bad rap. Mm-hmm. He's called Doubting Thomas. You probably heard him. The Bible doesn't call him Doubting Thomas. Yeah. But Doubting Thomas was uh, the the nickname in history has come mm-hmm. to known. But I, I really don't see it that way. I think he's a critical thinker. Yeah, he was a critical thinker. He demanded what's called empirical evidence. Right. Mm-hmm. So empirical evidence is evidence based on experience. So you experience and interact with the facts. Mm -hmm. So remember, all of the disciples other than Thomas had been with Jesus, had eaten with Jesus. They knew he wasn't a ghost. They knew he was truly raised from the dead. He Mm -hmm. was able to eat like uh, uh, any kind of physical body. So it was not just a what some people say, a phantom body or a Mm -hmm. ghost-like body. It was a real physical body, but um, they knew he had died. He knew he'd been buried. He was, he was, he was gone, yeah. and now he's raised from the dead. But then eight days later, so that was the first Sunday, the first day of his resurrection. Thomas is not there. Eight days later, the next Sunday, uh, they're uh, up there and they go, "I'm not going to believe unless I touch uh, his hands and his side." Right. Mm-hmm. So he wants empirical evidence. Right. Now, what's important about this is all of the apostles were not only known as those who handled the resurrection body of Jesus in order to become a part of the uh, 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 canon, the mm-hmm. Bible, mm-hmm. you had to have been one who had seen the resurrected Christ. And Paul, of course, did one born out of due time, the one that was uh, after uh, he had crucified or, uh, you know, persecuted the church. Jesus came to him it made him blind. The mm-hmm. glory was shining so brightly, <clears throat> excuse me, that he, um, he went blind for a season. And, uh, but, uh, Jesus revealed himself to him. And that moment he believed in mm-hmm. confronting the resurrection. But the reason it's important is because Thomas needs to be one that's going to report to th- to the followers of Jesus that he truly is raised from the dead. So you have all 12 members of the, of the uh, apostles mm-hmm. um, that in fact saw and handled the body of Jesus. But notice what Jesus did to Thomas. He didn't say, if you will believe in me, then I'll show you the evidence. Right. He said, here's my hands, here's my side. He knew what he was thinking. He knew yeah. the, the struggle he was having. And so he actually showed him the evidence. Now, for all time, that evidence is solid for us Mm -hmm. in historical record. It's what's called legal historical evidence. So we have the evidence of Jesus. Listen to John 20, 29. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Uh, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's Mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen the body of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we believe, and the reason we believe is not based on empirical evidence, Mm -hmm. uh, which would fit in that scientific evidence, but we believe on the historical record. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't make our faith any less, as Jesus said. So empirical evidence is really powerful, but the legal historical evidence is just as powerful. And so... Uh, there are many evidences. Uh, we talked about this last time, and and let me just reiterate some of those that that we shared at the end of the podcast. Um, 
let me see if I can pull this up here. Uh, it was several things that showed that Jesus had been raised. There was the broken seal. Oh, yeah. The guards went AWOL. The guards uh, uh, were there to protect that tomb, and yet mm-hmm. the tomb was miraculously opened. Mm-hmm. The tomb was empty. Uh, the transformation of the disciples that we just talked about, the 500 witnesses, Thomas's empirical inspection of the body of Jesus and his record, and his response was powerful. He said, you are my Lord and you're my God. So as you look at the evidence, the historical evidence, do you believe that Jesus is your Lord and your God? He's not a little God. He's very God. He's God incarnate. He is God that uh, was raised from the dead. He is our Lord and our Savior. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in him? See, it says uh, that if we believe with our heart that God hath raised him from the dead, we'll be saved. So we, we believe with the heart to the point that we have the righteousness of God. Do you believe in him? This Easter, this Easter week, as you go through, this is, we release this podcast on Monday, but throughout this week, whatever day you listen to this, I really hope you'll get to church and hear a message about Jesus Christ. He truly is the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening to our podcast. We're going to start a new series next week, uh, post-Easter. We're so thankful for you as our listeners. Again, if you'd like to support us, go to hoperescuepodcast.org. We'd love for your support. Thank you for listening. God bless. We'll see you next time. He is risen indeed. Bye, guys. There it is. (laughs)